Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be creating fake 3D motion graphic animation inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now the inspiration of this tutorial is coming from this Instagram handle. I was just mindlessly scrolling through Instagram Reels and I saw this video. It was pretty easy to do. I used Auto Effects to do this. We will be doing this inside of DaVinci Resolve. So hopefully you will learn something new in this video. So yeah, without wasting any more time, let's jump straight into the Fusion page. And we will start off by creating this um, fake 3D element. We will use the background node. Let's drag that in and we will connect an ellipse to this. And I can just scale that down. I want to cut this part over here. So for that, we will use a rectangle tool. So just add in a rectangle. And on the paint mode over here, set that to subtract. And then you can just sort of move it up like so. And just move it in the middle over here. So you can get these guides over here. And that will help you align things in the center. You can right click guides, show guides. We'll be using a value of 0.75. So that it will be in the middle. Now you can turn off the guides for now. There's a shortcut key, which is control G. And on the background over here, I'm going to actually use a gradient and you can just start using any gradient in here. And on the last one, probably do something like a blue. And then you can just sort of move the points close like this. Now we have gradient types over here. You can uh, do reflect square cross there are different types you can definitely play around with that you have to change the angles on some of these uh, to you know make it work i'm happy with the radial look over here this is kind of a nice look then we have want to create the upper part of this shape and to do that we will we will just copy this background and paste it down below and uh, we're going to add in another ellipse to this like that let's merge these two together and take a look at this merge now the second ellipse over here, we will just change the height and change the width and kind of match it up with the shape we had earlier, like so. And let's change the height even more. All right, cool. Now on this background over here, make sure that this is in the front. So go to merge seven here, make sure that this shape is coming in as a foreground. Right now it's coming in as a background. So you can hit control D on the merge seven. Make sure that you change the colors i'm gonna just change the direction that'll be much easier if you don't hit ctrl t then it'll be kind of messed up so you can see that the shape will look something like this make sure you hit ctrl t and this uh, shape is coming in as a foreground so in the ellipse over here i can use the height over here to adjust it and this will sort of uh, create that fake 3d movement in our shape all right cool let's start animating it after the merge 7 we will add in a transform and just take a look at this transform over here make sure it says transform and it could be any number over here if it's your first transform it will be transform one we will change the pivot position and bring it at the bottom of the shape because if it's in the center then it's going to animate from that point where the pivot is so we'll just uh, change the position of the pivot and now we change the angle it will animate from that point so let's start at frame 15 we will create a keyframe on angle. Let's go to frame 35 and let's change the angle like that. And then go to frame 50, change it to the other side like that. And let's go to the frame 70 and kind of bring it in the center, which is zero. So we'll have an animation like this on the same position, frame 15, 35, 50 and 70. We want to animate the height as well of this ellipse so let's just start click on the ellipse 4 we will create a keyframe on height this will be our height at frame 15 let's go to frame 35 change the height and you can kind of uh, reduce the height over there go to frame 50 and increase the height and then let's go to frame 70 and just bring it back uh, it was at 0.0, .0 five right so now it will also loop out nicely so if i just play the animation this is how it will look yeah it looks ridiculous at the moment and that's because there is no easing applied to it let's just actually do that i'm gonna go to transform and 
let's go to spline i'm going to select all the keyframes over here and hit s smooth it out and make sure that the angle over here is um you know in a straight line so the same thing over here as well we'll have an animation and you can do the same thing with height over here select all hit s to ease it out and then you have an animation like this you might want to change this again at later point but for now that is looking fine now next thing we want to do is we want to create a ball animation the bouncing ball animation and uh, this is the part where it will take you most of the time that's because you have to copy or mimic bouncing ball animation correctly if it's not correct then your animation will look very bad personally this part took me a whole day to create this to get this right but if you're experienced this might take you like uh, maybe two three hours so let's just connect this up and uh, reduce the size of this ellipse and we have this black ball let's change that to white and i'm going to just increase oh sorry decrease the size even more great so uh, we will start animating it from the very first frame which is frame zero after the background seven we will add in a transform and we use this transform to animate it so let's just move the ball over here outside the screen and then at frame 15 it will come down like so make sure you create a keyframe so you have to act with the keyframe so Act with the keyframe on center X and Y. And then let's go to frame 15 and just bring it to the left side. And that's because the ball will hit on the left side of this element. The impact will rotate or tilt this element over there. The next frame we have to create is on frame 35 because that is where it changes the position of the tilt. Um, so let's just go to this transform over here and uh, we have to go somewhere in between let's go to frame 25 and just move the position of the ball and sort of move it up like so and then let's go to frame 35 and hit the right side of this element next keyframe is at frame 50 so we'll go somewhere in between 35 and 50 so let's do something like 43 and make sure you are on the right node over here and we'll just change the position of the ball and sort of move it up like that all right so it will hit this side and then go up and then at frame 50 it will hit this side again maybe right over here so let's just move it to that position it will bounce again so let's just move it to this side and you can even um you know change the height that it will cover because with every bounce uh, there will be less and less distance and then we will go to frame i don't know frame 70 and just sort of sort of uh, move it down over here so you'll have an animation like this all we have to do is spend time easing out this animation we have to mimic bouncing ball animation which which actually takes a lot of time to do so um let's just do this i'm going to do this real quick because i don't want to waste your time let's go to the spline i'm going to select all hit s to smooth out all the keyframes and on the first keyframe i'm going to just make sure that this is straight in a straight line um so we'll have the first keyframe and if these lines are bothering you you can right click go to options and uh, disable show controls so this is our first bounce I'm going to just zoom in over here and on this second handle over here we can hold control key and sort of move it closer to this keyframe I kind of want to ramp it up because this is going to pick up the speed as it's coming down and then once it hits over here then it will start accelerating so then again I'll just select this and move this point right over here and pull this handle to the right and you have to just repeat this process so I kind of uh, that's kind of okay uh, but still I'm not happy with that you have to spend some time with this uh, path I think there's a really sharp turn when it goes up and comes down so I can just go to options and click on show controls and just select this point over here this one and then you can click on this icon to smooth that out change the motion path and kind of make it 
rounded over here. So now if you disable this and play this again, you'll have a curved motion instead of going in a straight direction. And I actually have this over here. I spend a lot of time doing this. So I just spend some time to create this part. And once you do that, then the next thing that I want to show you is the shading. You can apply a bit of shading. As you can see right now, it looks flat. At the moment, one trick that I use most of the time is after the background over here, I will add in a blur. Click on add and I'll just increase the size of it. And then uncheck the alpha over here. And then you just take the output of the rectangle and connect that as an input mask to this blur. I have this uh, shading applied to this element over here. So this is before and this is after. And then you can just sort of control, you know, play around with the, these different settings over here. If you turn off blue as well, you'll get this nice rim light around, which just gives it a nice touch. The next thing we can do is um, we can add in a smear animation to this ball over here. But to do that, we have to make sure our motion blur is turned on over here in the render. Go to transform and go to settings and enable motion blur and uh, you can increase the quality. The next thing you want to do is after the transform, you have to search for color curves, click on add, and then you want to disable red, blue, and green. Make sure the alpha is enabled, and then just take the end point over here and just drag it to the left over here. And make sure pre divide post multiply is checked, and this will give you this smeary looking animation. You can go transform and you can still control how it will look. All right, so I can set this to three. I think that looks fine. And if you want to have a longer smear, you can increase the shutter angle, but you have to increase the quality as well. So I'm going to just keep this to the default. So now uh, you can see that we have smear, but as soon as it hits uh, the element over here it will be uh, the smear will vanish and then again as it increases in speed you will see the smear back in action and it will just you know do this again and again that just adds a bit more life into our animation so yeah, that's uh, pretty much how you can uh, do this animation and um, over here you can see we have the background this is also a gradient a multi-point gradient and then I also applied some film grain to this. Uh, for this shading over here, this is basically a light ray effect. You can pretty much add any node that you can in here after the background. Play around with the settings and you'll get some really interesting results out of it. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope this was helpful. I hope it will help you in your upcoming projects. I will see you guys in the next one.